This is the Bay Area's news station. Prawn 4 News starts now with a developing story. Now at eight, a weekend of fear in a gold country town. When your husband's walking around with a pistol on his hip, you get a little scared. Everyone looking for signs of the child killer who stabbed a little girl to death in her own home. Definitely looking over her shoulders now. The brother of eight-year-old Layla Fowler says an intruder entered their home Saturday. An intense manhunt has turned up no trace of the killer. At this point, there is no specific suspect. We could be getting more answers. You're looking at the scene. We are waiting for a news conference to begin in Valley Springs. It looks like the officers are filing in. They are expected to update us on their investigation, and we will. Uh, we'll we're going to stay with it. It looks like they're beginning it right now, so let's listen. We'll, uh, start with some instructions, and then we'll get into the briefing. Can you speak up louder? Absolutely. I'll do the best I can. Come sure. Uh, hello, my name is Jim Macedo. Uh, I am a captain with the Calaveras County Sheriff's Office. Uh, before we start, I want to uh, explain tonight's process. Uh, there are going to be some statements from sheriff's personnel and then the family of Layla Fowler. Uh, a prepared statement that then will be read after that by another member of the sheriff's office. And then we will take uh, a few questions at the very end. Uh, first, I want to introduce the, uh, the sheriff of Calaveras County, Gary Kuntz. The sheriff is going to make a few comments. How are you doing tonight? I'd like to say this is a uh, sad time in Calaveras County. I want to assure the citizens of this county, especially in the Valley Springs area, that we are doing everything possible to, to apprehend the person responsible for the murder of this eight-year-old girl. I have spoken to the family of the victim and many citizens, and as you can imagine, they are quite distraught about this whole incident. We will not rest until we capture a responsible person. I'd like to thank all the outside agencies for assisting us in this investigation. I also want to thank the citizens of Calaveras County for their support and help. It's been very overwhelming. We will continue to beef up our patrols in this area until we figure it's no longer needed. Thank you. Next, I'm going to introduce Sergeant Chris Hewitt. Uh, Sergeant Hewitt is our departmental spokesperson. Uh, he was out of state at the date and time of the crime. Um, we are going to be transitioning. Uh, I'm going to be transitioning out as the press contact for the sheriff's office on this case so I can resume my uh, normal duties, which are actually part of the investigation. Uh, Sergeant uh, Hewitt will be the spokesperson moving uh, forward. He'll provide you with some information, and uh, he's going to read a prepared statement. Hello, no. Hello, my name is Sergeant Chris Hewitt, C-H-R-I-S-H-E-W-I-T-T. -T. The Calaveras County Sheriff's Office continued the search and investigation overnight and into this morning and throughout the day. An autopsy was conducted today on Leela Fowler. The cause of death was, li was listed by the medical examiner as shock and hemorrhage due to stabbing. We also want to report that members of the Calaveras County Sheriff's Office, California State Patrol, and the Calaveras County Probation Department have nearly completed, contacted, and in many cases searching all known registered sex offenders and parolees in the area where this crime took place. The Fowler family has asked that the following information regarding the memorial be conveyed to the media and to the public. A memorial fund has been set up for Leela Fowler at f and Bank of Central California. Please email all donations to f and Bank located at 18836 East Main Street. Linden, L-I-N-D-E-N, -E California, 95236. And for questions regarding this account or this memorial donation fund, uh, you can call 209-887-2299. This completes the briefing. We are going to take about five questions, and then we will need to allow Leela's parents to get back to their family. Well, one, excuse me, one second. Uh, we wanted to give uh, the, uh, Mr. Fowler and his wife an opportunity to speak. Uh, they did not have a prepared statement at this time. They will uh, prepare something tomorrow. Uh, they were having a tough time deciding whether or not they wanted to speak or not. So I want to give them an opportunity to say something uh, or I can relay it for you.
Uh, I don't think she wants to speak, but I will kind of paraphrase what she mentioned uh, or spoke to me about on the way over here. She wants to ask that everybody respect the family uh, and their privacy during this time, specifically uh, posting photos of her daughter. They're a little upset about that. They did authorize the release of some photos. However, uh, people are releasing other photos. They would also ask uh, the public uh, that they not make any negative or derogatory statements about uh, the family. Uh, they're also uh, having a difficult time in dealing with that. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that was uh, uh, was put out. Uh, the information on uh, the uh, the fund will be posted on our website, and uh, we would also ask that you post that on your uh, various media outlets, your web pages. Uh, with that, uh, we will start to take questions. Uh, Sergeant, you and I are both going to take questions. You mentioned DNA evidence, and you just mentioned contacting sex offenders. Was there a sexual assault involved in this case? Uh, we are not discussing any of the. Uh, uh, details of the investigation at this time. Um, so, uh, next question. What well, can you tell us anything about the investigation whatsoever? How far is it ranging? Uh, how many? Uh, we are continuing to conduct interviews. Uh, we have uh, submitted some evidence, and we intend to submit some more evidence tomorrow to the Department of Justice um, Crime Labs. Uh, we did receive uh, phone calls today from the uh, Attorney General. Uh, and the uh, California Department of Justice. Uh, they did inform us that they would not only expedite this case, but this case would uh, be the priority uh, case that they were working on in the state of California. Can you talk about who found her and what he saw? Before the say that he saw the intruder? Yes, the 12 year old son uh, saw a subject in his home uh, that uh, we uh, used the term intruder, our dispatcher did. Uh, and uh, that obviously caused him some concern. Uh, he briefly followed this person uh, until the person left the house, and that's when he went to check on his uh, sister. Someone else saw this guy. You, uh, the, the 12, the 12 year old son, and then someone reported else. that. There was a second witness uh, that lived in the neighborhood that saw somebody with a similar description uh, running in a different direction at that time. Uh, you, you scaled back the neighborhood search, only got one street closed at this point? That's correct. When did that happen? Yes. Do you have enough to put together a sketch of the suspect? Um, we've discussed that several times. Um, the problem is we have uh, the two descriptions from the date of the event, and we have a third description from somebody who had seen someone in the area a few days prior. There are some consistencies, which are those consistencies that we've released to you, but there is also some inconsistencies uh, on those three different descriptions. Uh, we do not want to mislead anybody or send anybody down the wrong direction. That's why we've chosen to not release a sketch or to go into those variances at this time. We wanted to stick with what was consistent between the three descriptions. Do you believe this? All the sexual offenders you checked out, have they all been ruled out? They have not been ruled out. They have been interviewed. In some cases, they've been photographed. They've been talked to. In some cases, they've been searched. And did you check them because of the sex crime? No, we did not. We, we, we checked them because we wanted to know what their whereabouts were and to see if there was anything that uh, was on their person or in their home that would have tied back to this case. We also spoke to them. Uh, hoping that somebody in this community, including those folks, could provide us with some information that may have led to further uh, so information in the case. Not because the evidence told you to go there. Correct. Do you believe this was ransom? Um, we don't know. That's still part of the investigation. I can tell you that uh, the investigation has taken a couple of different avenues, and we do not want to treat one portion of that investigation uh, lighter than the other. So we are invest continuing to investigate all leads as though they are accurate and very important. Uh, we have not necessarily prioritized that. Do you know if this guy, um, there was some talk about a guy that may have been covered in blood, that was picked up, some guy who spoke to a number of us. Do you know anything about that or been able to corroborate any of that? And can you uh, mention his parents' names so we can Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, to answer your question first, um, I'm familiar with your report, but we have nothing that has progressed as, as, as it relates to that specific report at this time. Um, if, if you bear with me for a second. Uh, the parents that are here tonight are Barney, B-A-R-N-E-Y, Fowler, F-O-W-L-E-R. He is the father of Layla and Crystal Walters. Crystal is the mother of Layla Fowler. Crystal. 
Um, she she told me she is her mother, and that's how I think she wants to be known. Uh, are, you, are you still advising the president? Two, two more questions, folks. Could you advise the president to keep your doors locked? How much concern should the committee members have? I couldn't hear the first part of the are question. Are you still advising people to keep their, their doors and windows locked? How much concern should residents have about say, this person spreading you down? We always advise folks to lock their doors and windows. Um, it, it is, but uh, and I'm sorry. I, the second part of your question again was. I mean, is there is there any fear from law enforcement that this person could strike again in the community? Uh, is there any fear? No. Are we concerned? Absolutely. That's why we staffed up accordingly. Again, we want to treat uh, this case um, uh, as though there is an intruder uh, on the loose, and we are actively following up on that. Guys, What's your message to the person who did this? Um, please come forward, or if anybody that knows anything about uh, or has any information, however slight, and I can't emphasize enough how many cases we actually break from the smallest piece of information, uh, please come forward. Last question. Last question. I, I, I will talk to them, but they weren't, they weren't ready uh, to do that. They did talk about doing it tomorrow. Get, bear with me for a second. Out of respect for the family, they'd like to wait till tomorrow. Uh, we have no other press conference scheduled at this time. Uh, we will discuss uh, some things with the family tomorrow. If we have uh, important information to release, uh, we will hold another press conference in the morning. However, I would not plan on it. I would look more uh, later into the afternoon or early evening. Uh, again, thank you very much, and we cannot emphasize uh, how much we appreciate the support uh, we received from the community. I think the sheriff was very clear about that. Um, uh, the community has been fantastic in supporting us uh, every step of the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. have been listening to a news conference in Calaveras County. Police uh, giving us a, a bit of an update on the murder of an eight-year-old girl killed this weekend in her own home. Uh, her father was there, a woman who was described as wanting to be described as the mother, raising some question as to whether that is her mother. Again, here's what we know. Police say that a white or Latino man attacked Layla Fowler at her house. They're not really telling us a lot. They have indicated they have some DNA and fingerprints. Crime Force J.R. Stone is near the scene of that crime. And again, police have been telling people to keep their doors and windows locked. Me and my friend Audrey was really good friends with her and we are crying a lot. It was that kind of day at Jenny Lind Elementary School in Calaveras County. Students dealing with the death of eight-year-old Layla Fowler, who was found murdered in her home on Saturday. Did they tell you that there was people here to help you if you were sad? My teacher was crying because um, Layla was in her class last year. She's really awesome. She's a cool friend. She's really nice to all the kids in our class. She works really hard. They all said, everybody who knew her said that she was a very nice person. Students made signs for Layla and even put bows up to remember her. As for safety concerns, deputies were at the school making their presence known. Parents waited in long lines to pick up their children. Others went to their child's class. I decided just to go with them to school and see if they, you know, to make sure that they needed me and was there. And I just let them know that there was a bad guy out there that hurt a little girl and she's up in heaven. And they understand as much as they can. Sad, even though I didn't know her, I feel really sad because lots of people said that I would have liked her if I didn't know her. Many here in Valley Springs still very shaken up over what happened. There will be a candlelight vigil held at 7 o'clock on Tuesday night. In Calaveras County, J.R. Stone, Cron 4 News. All right, we have a map here to show you the area in Calaveras County we're talking about. Valley Springs right here, about 30 miles northeast of Stockton, a very rural area. And we have aerials of the home where Layla Flower was killed. You can see it right here. These pictures courtesy of our helicopter partnership with ABC7 News. You see that white vehicle in the driveway. That's a law enforcement vehicle. Sheriff's officials saying just moments ago, we brought the press conference to you live, that there is not fear the suspect could strike again, but there is concern beefed up patrols will still be scouring the area making sure that no one 
is a victim again of this suspect, but again, more questions than answers at this point as we continue to follow the story. An eight-year-old girl stabbed to death in Calaveras County. We'll take a short break right now. Be right back.